fun. I'm about to introduce author Kristen Higgins, and we're talking about her newest book called Good Luck With That. And you are going to love this conversation. She is amazing, and I was so happy when she said yes, and we had so much fun. You are going to love her. So everybody, here is Kristen. Hi everyone, I am so excited because I'm speaking with author Kristen Higgins and we are talking about her brand new book that's coming out this week called Good Luck With That. And uh, I, I feel like I've, I haven't come out of that book yet because it's the last oh, thing I've read today. So <laughs> I'm still in the book and I love this book so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thrilled. You know, it was, uh, It's. I've been getting a lot of early reader feedback um, and it's all been really incredible people saying how impactful the book is and and how they've been there too and and um how much it means to them so i'm so excited for it to come out and for people to read it yeah i kind of have a funny story too because yesterday i'm reading it right and i'm on social media checking everything you know in between chapters and stuff and a story came out that kim kardashian was on because i'm not you know we're friends i'm on the kardashians all the <laughs> Anyway, a story came out that said that one of her sisters called her anorexic and then she was like, oh, thank you. And oh, then it got God. caught on tape. Okay. Yeah. So they're like out and they're at the, an event somewhere this weekend. And, and so this thing kind of went viral yesterday. Right. Yeah. And then of course, I think she was on Jimmy Kimmel. I don't know, but it was like everywhere. Right. And I was re so I'm reading this book and I was like, do you see what we struggle with? Like, yeah. heaven forbid she be fat, okay? Right. <laughs> or just, pounds. just normal, you know, just like somewhere in between fat and thin, like, you know, I, and, and fat is such a relative term, you know, because of the way it's defined by, you know, the, the NIH and, and, and uh, you know, it, it's, we all look in the mirror and we see something different. And I think... I think very few of us um, haven't struggled with body image and self-esteem and the, the way they're linked. You know, I, I certainly have. Um, and I wanted to write a book that talked about that kind of omnipresent, constant struggle that so many women have. And if you're not one of them and you like yourself the way you are, I'm so proud of you. God bless you. And I want to get there too. And I want everyone to come, you know, yes. come over to your side. Um, I've met a few people who are like, yeah, no, I really don't think about it. But I think most of us do. And like the Kardashians are a great example of we're held up to this, this ideal that one, we're never going to reach, you know, to have Kim's curves and yep. still have a flat stomach and toned arms and a big butt and big boobs and all this stuff. Or, Beyonce or you know a supermodel like we're just not going to get there ever and and we have to stop trying to like make ourselves look a certain way when what we really need to do is be a certain way which is be good to ourselves and and take care of our bodies whatever shape they're in you know um and really accept where we are now and and appreciate that so that's the message of good luck with that and I loved it. And, you know, I was even thinking about, like, you know, my own struggle and ha having pregnancies. And, and I think, you know, there wasn't social media when I was getting pregnant and having babies. And, you know, and you see now, like, these models that, you know, two weeks later, they're, like, posing in a bikini. And, you know, it's like, I'm like, oh, my God, right. I'm so happy that that was not my life. Like, there was no camera around to, like, you know. Uh, yeah. Comparison is really difficult, I think. And, um, you know, in – in good luck with that, Marley and Georgia are constantly comparing themselves yes. to other women. And like that initial thought is like, is she thinner than I am? Is she bigger than I am? And, and I think a lot of us do that. I was talking to these two 20 somethings a couple of days ago, and they were talking about that. They're both really attractive women by any standard. And, and they say, yeah, I, I look at pictures of me a couple of years ago and I think, oh, I have to get thinner or, you know, I look at her and I think like, I wish I had bigger boobs, you know, and, and we do that. And the women in the book do that too. You know, that constant like running narrative of, I have to be better. I have to look better. Yeah. Um, and, and it's exhausting. You know, you go to the supermarket, right. And you see like, get beach ready in 24 hours by drinking this cabbage juice, you know, or, um, lose 30 pounds in 20 days. And, 
and, you know, lose weight before your wedding. And, and I know personally, like so many of the major turning points in my life, I thought I got to lose weight for this, you know, Oh, I'm going to a, a new high school. I have to lose weight. I, I have to lose weight for the senior play. I have to lose weight when I go to college. Um, this is the summer I'm really going to get in shape. And it's just so, um, denigrating to your soul. You know what I mean? Yeah. To constantly be finding fault with your with yourself. Yeah, and then it's when it awesome. doesn't happen, you're like, yeah, <laughs> like I didn't do it. I said I was going okay. to, and then I right. didn't. And you know, it's. But any, I, I, let me tell everybody the first line of this book that they read when they read it. It's gonna. It says, "For once, no one was thinking of food." And when it hit me, because okay, even if we're not dieting, you know, whether we're dieting, not dieting. What do we do? We think about what's the next meal? What are we going to have for a snack? What if I get hungry? What if I'm out yeah. and I get hungry? <laughs> right. I mean, I certainly think that way. Yeah. And I, um, I'm, I'm like a foodaholic, you know, I, I, that, that's the thing about food is you can't live without it. Right. So you, you do have to think about it. It's not like alcohol or, right. um, you know, narcotic addiction or something. It, you have to eat food. Right. So if you're a food addict, like Emerson is in the book, where she is really powerless before her addiction, um, she still has to eat. And it's so difficult, you know. And I know I think about my next meal before my first meal is done, you know. Yeah. Or if I skip a meal, I, like you said, I get kind of kind of feel like, oh, God, I'm going to get hungry. <laughs> what will I eat then, you know. <laughs> and usually, you know, the answer is whatever's closest. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm not a great role model for healthy eating. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's just that constant thought about what's next. How much should I eat? How little should I eat? Will I have dessert? And, and to, again, like if you're not like that, that's so fantastic. If you just eat and enjoy food and you don't have those sort of reward punishment narrative in your head, good for you. I want everybody to get there. Oh, like I Marley, you know, Marley in the book is a lot better about food. Yes. She's a chef, so she has to think about food all the time. She eats mostly healthfully. She's overweight enough that she, you know, can't stop and shop in the normal stores, by which I mean, like, the ones in the mall. Right. I still can't shop at J. Crow. You know, I'll, like, tear a shirt like the Incredible Hulk if I put on a J. Crow shirt, you know? Um, and uh, that's their largest size, too. You know, yeah. I'm like, I can't get my arms in here. Um but Marley doesn't care as much. You know, she's athletic. She she grew up in a really loving family where being a healthy eater is revered because she has this, this sad, sick little twin who doesn't make it. And so her size is celebrated, you know. Right. She gets – she's – they're thrilled that she can eat like a horse, you know, and, and that whole family culture of love is food. That's certainly something I grew up in. Yeah. How about you, Michelle? Um, no, my mom, <laughs> my mom was the exact opposite, but I have to say, I know you have daughters and when I, I have... had my daughters, because my mom was hard on me, um, she, she grew up in the 60s, you know, we aren't, we aren't that far apart. She was a teenager when she had me and she grew up in the sixties yeah. where, you know, they were thin, they were really thin and she'd always, you know, try to keep me. She, she thought it was, she was doing me a favor. She really what? did. They did. That's a thing. It's not like she wasn't being mean. It was like yeah. a favor. But I know with my daughters and now they're in their twenties, like I changed everything about the way I talked about my eating things in front of right. them. You know, or if they say, oh, I'm getting fat, I'm like, no, you're not. Like, I, I changed everything because of my daughters. And I wondered if that helped you, too. Like, because yeah. you don't want them to be, you're like, no, I don't want them to have that struggle at all. Like, yeah. you know. Our mom sounds similar in that my mom was on a diet from, like, 1972 <laughs> to last week, you know. Um, and she is a beautiful woman and she, you know, as a young woman, she looked like Grace Kelly and I was like her dumpy, you know, daughter with the Coke bottle <laughs> glasses and a firm. And, um, and I think she, she felt like a lot of her value came from being like this charming wife hostess for my dad who was a businessman and, and that, yeah, it really did matter how big you were and how you looked. And, um, and so I, I grew up with that, and it really wasn't until I had my daughter, who was my firstborn, um, 
that I felt like, wow, look at my body and what it did. It made a human, yeah. you know, it was such I, a miracle. It's such an overused word, but it yeah. really is a miracle to have a healthy baby, you know? And I thought I have to do better for her. And so I, I thought I have to really appreciate myself yeah. so that she will appreciate herself. Right. And I faked it and I lied. And <laughs> yet, you know, when your little three-year-old is looking up at you and she says, you're so pretty, mommy. Yep. You are. You know that you are. Because yep. in the eyes of this perfect little human, you know, you are beautiful and comfortable. And, like, being strong was something I always was really proud of. You know, I've got these big brawny football shoulders and stuff. And I, like, my sister said, um, Kristen is as strong as any man. No, she's as strong as a strong man. And I was like, yes, that's right. <laughs> You know, I can pick up a sack of grain and I can hoist it around. And those are the things like you have to recreate that narrative of saying, yeah, you know, I can't fit into a J. Crew shirt. But if you need your snowblower lifted into the back of your pickup truck, you can call me (laughs) and I'll take care of that for you. Yeah, I mean, that's what I wanted. I wanted that dialogue with my daughters where it wasn't about my my youngest daughter works at the loft at a dollar loft. And she'll pick out shirts for me. And I'm like, you know, my arms are not going to fit. So it's like, we can laugh about it. And it's a conversation, you know? And by the time I got done with this book, I was like crying. I mean, the ending is so beautiful. And, you know, you've written so many books. This, what number is this? I think I had it. Oh, 18. Yeah. That is crazy. I went on your website. Everybody, I'm going to have her website down there because they should go on it. Your covers are so beautiful and we can't hold one up to show you how beautiful, but they are really beautiful. (laughs) Awesome. One of us happened to have a copy of the book for this interview. (laughs) But it's true. And, and I loved them. I was like, you know, going through all your covers and I'm a cover person. I'm like, look at the colors and, and do you get to have, pick those out? Like, are you involved? Yeah, I do. Um, I do get a say in my book covers and, um, and I get final approval now, um, after 18 books. So <laughs> this, this book cover has, um, bubbles on it and it's really beautiful blue and purple colors. And the bubbles to me represented like this, this lightness and this wishing on the kind of this innocence of, of, you know, when you're a little kid and you blow bubbles, when the girls in the book first meet, they're teenagers and they're at weight loss camp, all sent by their parents. Marley begged to go, but it was just a regular thing for Georgia and Emerson. And there's like this sense of innocence in that first scene when they're just swimming in the lake and they're having such a great time and, and food doesn't matter and size doesn't matter. It's just them and their friendship. And, and that's, that's such a beautiful image. And so I think the cover really reflected that very well. Um, Cause so much of the book is about friendship and especially female friendship and how it, it, It gives you such a gift because like one of the things in the book is that Georgia and Marley and Emerson are all hard on each other, but they adore each other. And Georgia says at one point, if anyone had judged me as harshly as as I judged myself about my weight, I would have hated them. And yet she spent 35 years doing that to herself. She would never do that to Marley or Emerson. She adores them. And, and I think that's a lesson that you can take from good luck with that is be as good to yourself as you would be to your best friend. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it was so much humor and, you know, I had tears in my eyes as I'm reading some of it and then laughing. And I was like, Oh, this is like the perfect, you know, I read a lot of like thrillers and history mm-hmm. books. And, and when I read this one, I was just like, Oh, all day. I was like, Oh, I get to read this. Great <laughs> book. That's, you know, just like you get to go into that world and be with them. And, and you, you know, by the end I was like, I felt like I was friends with Marley. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there are definitely hard scenes in the book, yeah. because I, I don't think it's a plot spoiler to tell you that um, Marley, I mean, sorry, Emerson yeah. dies very, very early on in the book. And it's from complications related to her what's medically and very unkindly called super morbid obesity. She weighs, you know, on the other side of 600 pounds. And she has just kind of lost control of her food addiction and she has wound up, you know, with all sorts of complications. And 
you know, those are hard scenes to read um, when she her story is told through her journal entries. And like the casual cruelty that people deal out to people of size is just stunning. You know, I've, I've heard from some book clubs and stuff who got to read early copies and they say like, yeah, you know, strangers on the street feel free to comment on people's size, my size, my dad's size, whatever it is, you know, just and assume that you're stupid because you you're overweight, you know, that you don't know how to eat right. right. And I really wanted to address, you know, what this kind of food addiction is. It is an addiction, you know, just the way anorexia is an addiction to control or, or you know, opioid abuse is a, is a true addiction. And it's not pretty. And it's, it is hard to read about. And Emerson knows what she's going through. She's, she's an intelligent woman. Um, but so, so there are definitely, I think, scenes where you ugly face cry, which is something I try to give to my readers yes. <laughs> every, every book. Um, but it's balanced with a lot of laughs and, and lightness. And then this, this really strong, beautiful current of love between friends. And I loved how you brought her into the story through her diaries because yeah. you get to know more about her. And it's just, and I wish I keep acting like I'm holding it, but I don't, I'm not like, I usually like <laughs> hug books and I don't. I'm not holding it. <laughs> okay. So this is coming out this week. You're on book tour and everything, but you know, how, how do you, are you on like a book a year or do you do yes. two books a year or how do you? Um, I've slowed down to a book a year because um, my books are, are pretty substantial. This one is um, upwards of 400 pages, so you get your money's worth, I like to say. Um, and also because um, they just take a little longer because a lot of my books, I, I started out writing romantic comedy, and I think there's still a lot of romance and comedy in my books, but they're they're considered women's fiction now. Yeah. So that means it's more about the characters in this in the story, the protagonists, and not quite as much as about their love relationships, their love interests. Um, so yeah, a book a year. And then, you know, I, I'm doing this big book tour, 23 cities. So go to my website, see if I'm near you. I would love to meet a reader. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I, I, I don't write every day, but I do work every day. Um, so I, you know, work on um, marketing, answering fan mails, interviews like this, yeah. or or usually a combination of that and writing fiction. Well, I want to tell everybody not yeah, not just check out your website, but you also have a blog, and it's really funny. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> you keep it up to date. Not a lot of people do, so I always check it out. Uh, I, I have I a really big following on the blog, and and you know, it's very personal. Like this last one was about my daughter and me. <laughs> And personal grooming. Yes, it was oh. really funny, though. So I love a good thank vlog. You. I really do. So thank you so much. And I would hold up her book, but I'm, you guys are seeing it on the screen. So <laughs> thank you so much. I can't wait to see what this book does. And I'm going to have all of Kristen's links listed underneath here. And I just want to tell you, when you said that you would talk to me, I was in the middle of Target last week, and I, like, screamed. And then everybody <laughs> looked at me. And I was That's like, great. sorry? You're like, okay, maybe I can fit you in. I was like, yes! <laughs> No, I'm so glad we could make it work. Thanks yes. for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and next book, you know where to find me because I will read it early. I'd love to. Sounds great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you for watching that interview. Wasn't she adorable? Oh, my gosh, guys. You are going to love this book. Okay, it is out. All the links for Amazon and everywhere is right below here so you can just hit the link. It'll take you to the one one push button where you can buy it. And I just want to thank Kristen. It was such a so much my pleasure to talk to her she was so sweet and I I'm not kidding in Target I like yelled when she said yes and I was so thrilled so and I'm so thrilled that I got to read this book early and I just want to thank her publicist for making that happen so everyone thank you